Thank you, Dr. Alka. Come, I'll just make a comment. Because, because we are running, running short, short of time, time. I, I will... will... Smart watch, huh? smart phone, bole kar to sab ke paas hai. Two people. Sure, don't be shy. Yaar. I'm not going to add three. So, so, so gradually, and uh, before at the outset in, of this session, let me say, I had, written, I had read a wonderful statement in the Times of India that in 21st century, the devices we use are called smart watches and smartphones. Isn't it the time that the human wearing it is called smart human? <laughs> so I think with that little of introduction in mind, let's uh, do the session with that bit of thing. So one in 10 adults already has diabetes. We know that. And a significant uh, numbers are expected to rise, especially in the middle and low uh, income age group. Less than 10 people, uh, one in 10 people have diabetes, achieve a satisfactory clinical outcome, which is shameful, both on the receiver's part and the giver's part. We as clinicians are equally to be blamed here. The receivers, the patient themselves, for whatever reasons are to be blamed, but we need to bridge the gap. And the healthcare spend per person with diabetes are much more higher than without an increasing fast. So, with that little of introduction, I would want to start with Dr. Tivaskar. He's been on the practice forum much more than all of us here on this stage. So what's your take from the beginning years of diabetes treatment to the present that how do you bridge all of this? Yeah, and I'm, good morning, everybody. And thank you, uh, entire IDEC team, especially uh, the, the arrangements and the classroom teaching that has been happening. It's really appreciable, Archana. And of course, uh, all of you for spending your mornings with us. Uh, thank you, Amit, for those kind words of introduction. And of course, we all are aware about that. Um, the brutal truth that even though we are advancing at so many areas as far as the management of diabetes is concerned, but un unfortunately, we are far away from the goals that we target. Maybe possibly that in the initial days, we may not have had a privilege of using you know, the latest gadgets which are coming up. The monitoring was difficult. We know that the diabetes management usually stands on six pillars, right? Apart from insulins, apart from the rest of the oral medications, the lifestyle changes, the exercises, but most important is monitoring. Monitoring and the continuous monitoring programs along with the patient education also are the pivotal parts of diabetes management. And unfortunately, we may have our beautiful drugs, we may have beautiful advisors, but then the major restricting factor, according to me, still continues to be a poor monitoring technique and a poor, uh, probably, life, uh, uh, the poor education of the patients. And we all know that the success of diabetes management does not happen in clinics. It depends on what happens in between the visits to the clinics. And that is the place where probably nowadays with smart technology coming up, we are having a little advantage of you know, doing a better monitoring, better follow-up of your patients. And I'm more than sure about it that the, in the coming days, artificial intelligence included in this monitoring and the patient education programs is going to be really a change which will be visible in the coming times. So I think what Sir is trying to say it has been adopted by, and again, a Googleable fact, by Baiju's. So Dr. Salda here does a lot of type ones. And we see a lot of students and we have children of our own. And initially in our time, just school and exams, nobody in between monitored our studies, monitored our progress, monitored our grades. And that is where these digital classes have actually taken over. So Baiju somewhere did homework and realized that if you don't monitor a child in between the school and the exam, you can't get the expected grade. And that's exactly what probably he's trying to say that when he started practice, the monitoring was not really possible because of challenges. And now with devices coming in, maybe with home monitoring and maybe uh, when they come to you inter-clinic visits, those monitorings are better. Rajiv, uh, Arvinda, just jump in. Whenever you want to say something, just please So jump Amit, in. Um, uh, I think uh, we, we, we have want to have it more interactive uh, rather than have a preachy session. Yes. Uh, so I agree with Amit uh, and uh, Mangesh that if a student has to excel and get distinction, he has to study every day. And we all were last benchers and we would do that, you know, we had that LMR, last minute revision, we used to do read that and, you know, go through the exam. But we have to realize that when we are in practice, um, patient is a huge, a, a patient with diabetes is a huge confused soul. He's coming to you for multiple things. and. Data suggests that the average time spent 
in a chronic care clinic is two to two and a half minutes. Now, to write a prescription, it takes three minutes. To think about what, what the patient needs, it takes five minutes. So how can you treat a patient within two and a half minutes? And, and a follow-up are abysmal. You know, I, I think only 25-30% of our patients in chronic care follow up. So there's a huge need that there is something outside our system which needs to get structured. It cannot be the spouse because that becomes nagging. You know, <laughs> it cannot cannot be a buddy because he may just you may ch just change buddy. So now the time has come and buddy has become uh, virtual. The world has become flat, and that is why it's important that the structured care, the nudging the motivation, the education, everything is imparted completely on an artificial intelligence. And that is the beauty of technology. You know, because our time spent is, is very little. And if we get a patient slightly graduated, slightly better literate, you know, after 20 years when the patient asks me that, doctor, can I have rice? You know, I feel like jumping out of the window. So there's something I have done wrong. You know, can I have dosa? So you 25 years you're coming to me and you're asking the same question. So we need that health literacy and that can happen only when the patient is motivated. And that only technology can bridge that gap. We cannot bridge the gap otherwise because uh, once the patient is out, the information is either Google which is unscreened or it's a kitty party or a breakfast discussion or a cocktail discussion. You know? so, so doctors have become brands, you know. Uh, so it becomes, uh, we are all become commodities. That's where the thing needs to change. And if we can have, problem is that the AI today has, has not come to a level that there are a lot of RCTs on it. Once we have good RCTs on AIs and a good structured care outside our clinics, I think it is time that then we will be the diabetes care capital of the world. And, and I hope so that day comes soon. Wonderful. So I think I, to sum up what Rajiv said, neither a spouse nor a friend, but something like a robo buddy Absolutely. who probably can, you know, help the patient and the doctor. So because Dr. Arvinda comes from the Silicon Valley of India, the Bangalore, I would want his comment upon this. That where does that robo buddy now come in the present 21st century? Yeah, see, 20 years back you take. <clears throat> when we were doing MBBS and all, we never thought these things will happen. We always thought uh, if the diabetes management is uh, only two drugs, I go for metformin, sulfonylurea, or go straight away insulin. Now things have been changing so rapidly. I can, we can see the lab backbenchers there with uh, a lot of uh, mobile phones in their hands and all those things. So in future, the same thing will happen. In the, when you come into this stage, we may see wonders. The robo may be walking around like this here. So they are educating all of them about the diabetes management and all. So yesterday we were discussing that flying car, like yesterday from uh, airport to here, we took around two hours. We were just, uh, just thinking, what does the technology will do in the next 20 years? So we were thinking the flying cars may come. So the thing is, the, how badly you think it will be a reality. What I personally always feel in Bangalore, if you think something, you think, think awkwardly, that will become a reality. So the, that is the new trend, actually. If you, as a student, if you are saying, if you think some wild thing, something in the management of diabetes, whether this can be done, definitely it can be done. So the thinking and education is the uh, future, in the sense, in the sense, like a lot of technology is coming up. I'm sure we will be discussing more about these things in the coming slides. The technology, like as Dr. Amit was asking, the robo, definitely the robo plays an important role in the management of type 2 diabetes. If you take any app, if you, uh, once you open the app, there is one person coming and say, hi, I am uh, Mona, I am here to help you. You suddenly think, who is this uh, to help me? But this is what is happening in every app. In the same thing, when it comes to diabetes management also, the future is the robo technology will definitely makes the patient's life easy and for the doctors to treat the patients also will be easier. In the sense, we can have the data to show them in front of them, this is what you are doing. So this is the good thing you are doing, this is the bad thing you are doing. So moment you say that, that the understanding is good. So understanding by the patient as well as the family members is good. Every time you say, eat one idli, eat one jamun extra, what will happen? 
So we can always show, see, you have eaten jamun, see, this is what is happening. So then they realize, okay, this is what the technology is telling us. This is what, where I have to be strict on my diet, on particular exercise or something like that. So robo is one thing, is the future, I'm, I'm sure it will take a, uh, it will reduce our uh, time in the management of type 2 diabetes or management of diabetes. Wonderful. So I think first five uh, minutes and a couple of slides we've established that a digital Mona Darling is here to stay. Now a couple of slides more and then we take it forward. Jump in. Okay, anybody has any questions, raise a hand. Many students here, so please don't make it a didactic lecture. Just ask and make it as interactive as possible. You can ask. Please, any Dr. Archana. You Um, it being a result, it being uh, compared to a class, I think that's very intimidating for a person who is actually monitoring. And that is one of the major deterrent uh, for not wanting to monitor. So uh, that was just an observation that happens. Many people don't even check because they're scared of what will be there. I, with 100% endorsement on wanting to do this, but the analogy of an examination. So in fact, if, when I work with type one, so I always tell them this is not an exam. You're not being judged on your reading. This is just an action point on which you will decide what you will do next. So I just wanted to um, touch on that. Yes. Is that an angle that we no, look but at? Absolutely. Archana, uh, maybe probably I have a little different opinion on that. You know, intimidation is not a aim here, basically. It's like, it's the way you put it. You know, it might have sounded you as an intimidating, but it was never uh, aimed at intimidation. It's more of, probably this is the smart way of using. You don't have to say this. Suppose I am failed. You know, there are different ways of telling that I have failed. Right? So it's simple as that. So it, it doesn't make uh, intimidation unless and until you interpret in that way. Correct? So it's very necessary for us to understand the difference between, you know, knowing about it and being intimidating. Correct? So that is the place where the I th I think your, the, your role will Yeah, the common ground between the two points is that try to make an atmosphere with the patient as open and honest. That is neither a judgment and neither is anybody judging. Yeah. In, so in the sense that why technology is currently very, very pivotal, it's primarily because of this reason, is this that you need to understand what is happening in between the two visits. Yes. That's the only thing. So that being you, not as a patient, but you being a care, uh, you know, or a healthcare provider to the patient, your responsibility becomes little more difficult than even the patient's. Because it is your responsibility to pick up these areas which needs to be addressed and improved upon. Right? Great. So on that note, let's see what the patients are doing. The patients are actually stopping the medicines along with therapy because for them the, the, the cost factor is still uh, is a main deterrent, whether it's a Bombay city, Bangalore city or, or a hinter area of the, city, of the country. I think it's a major factor. Uh, so therefore, diabetes management goes beyond just taking medication, requires motivation, continuous support. I think we've established that. And that includes, as we said, monitoring, trying to reduce the risks, problem solving, health, healthy eating, being active and healthy coping as well. So living with diabetes made easy today with the kind of technology we have. So what do we do? We have wireless tech, we have a lot of uh, data available which we can integrate, social sharing can be done, a breakthrough tech can be achieved. So we go a little beyond and we try to see the benefits of digital solution for the patient, why the need of a digital solution. So Dr. Tivaskar, if you could take it, why do we need this? So we've established we need it. In fact, uh, you know, you asked me about my 30 years before story. Probably the life was much simpler for a healthcare provider or a doctor. Now with this kind of a technology which is coming up, and you know how many thousands of apps on different platforms we are going to have. Patients are going to Google every information and they are going to come to you and ask you about them. So first and the foremost is that it would be our responsibility to know about all these things. You need to know even the names of the apps. These are available and now they are going to ask you on these questions. So here probably that is one, uh, I, I would say, is an area where all the healthcare providers will need to update themselves as far as the possible newer technology revolutions which are going to come in the medical practice, especially management of diabetes we are talking about, you know, currently. Of course, these are the wonderful, wonderful apps, but again, the, again, the whole thing is this, that you may have a, a you know, lovely robo as as Raju was talking about, but Lovely the, the, the ultimate thing is this, that 
how do you interpret what that robo is suggesting that is going to be the key deciding factor please in bear in mind they are referring to artificial so, so. intelligence because the youngsters may start believing there's going to be a robot uh, <laughs> so in the future yeah, accompanying and sitting is, beside them so like this so. is this is what we are talking about like the the time is not so far off said suppose you know i am on the midst of somewhere road my medical history is faded in the app and i suddenly say to my mobile phone or my artificial intelligence that i am hungry and it will say that okay you know 200 meters from you now is a mcdonald's which is available this is the menu which is available on this McDonald's, but you have diabetes, you have hypertension, you are on with these medications. So the only possible things that you can eat are one, two, three, four, four. Yes. And these many portions of this, this many portions of this you are supposed to eat. So that is going to be the simplistic use of this technology, which is going to be a future of all. So we need to be very, very worse, well versed. Nobody can be, you know, away. And in fact, now I will not be surprised even a medical curriculum would include one Alexa. subject as medical technology. Alexa. Correct? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what Dr. Tivaskar in nutshell was trying to say that for our patients, we can become Alexa, but for us to become Alexa, Rajiv can take it forward that what do doctors have to do to empower themselves? So uh, there's one question to all those youngsters behind that how many of y'all have gone to a bank and uh, written a self check and come back with money? Have y'all ever, y'all have all done self checks? Fantastic, yeah. We, you have done, I have done. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, yeah. you know, so, so, so self-checks are out. Why are you doing it? Is my question. You know, why do you need it? <laughs> then, then, then the ATMs came in. They are also out. Today is only digital payment. There's, where, where is, where, you don't see money. It's all virtual. My money is there in the phone. You know, if your money can be in the phone, why can't your health be in the phone? And importantly, the People who come to see us are more technology savvy than what we are. You know, they, they have already done all their research. So I'll t tell you a real story, uh, maybe 15 years back, pre-WhatsApp days. So a patient was leaving my cabin and suddenly one leaflet fell down. I spoke, spoke about this in the morning also. A leaflet fell down from the, fell off the file. So she left the room and I picked it up. So it was actually a printout which had my, my reviews, not on my Google, but on some other platform. That's when I realized that every patient who comes to you, you know, goes on, on the web and then finds out how you are, you know, and yes. then comes to you. If the patient is doing it, then it's the reverse time. You know? yes. And they are, and these, all these things that we, we are showing you, digital solutions, they're already using it in many other sectors of their life. You know, and health is something, I think, health literacy is what we need to talk about. And these apps improve health literacy. And if we can improve that health literacy, we will easily improve compliance to many things. Just like taking medication. You know? uh, my, my mother has senile dementia and she's on basal bolus insulin on flash glucose monitoring. You know, there are alarms kept on her phone. We still have to monitor because with all this technology, she's ta the, the lowest hanging fruit is that she takes insulin. But if there was no technology, there was no alarm, there was no flashing, she would completely miss her insulin. So yeah. I think technology has changed a lot of things in our lives. And the, the earlier we adopt technology, I think it will be easier in the longer run. And these apps are very, very similar, very, very easier to use. And as you said, smartphones, smart watches, smart humans. Doctors have to get smart. Yes. Doctors have to get diabeto technologists. You know, and doctors are getting smarter, but we need to slightly be one step ahead of the patient, I would say. So I think as the new Spider-Man, whoever has seen Spider-Man 3 and 4, he gets a new tech from Stark, and he's happy with the new suit and everything. But his friend, Ned, the the Chinese looking fellow, the fat friend, he always says, I am the man in the chair. He's proud to say that I am the man in the chair who manages the tech for Spider-Man. So for our patients, we need to be the men or the women in the chair, manage the tech for them. And Dr. Arvidna can probably, again, the tech person can tell so us how. Main thing is uh, inertia plays an important role in the sense, um, as a doctor per se, if any new technology, we always think, oh, my time is not there, I'm very busy, I'm seeing so many patients per day and all. Uh, in a few of my patients, uh, in every day-to-day -day OPD, they come with a printout. 
Okay, they come with a printout in the Google or somewhere, they come with a printout and uh, say something about this new app. So you can see so many apps there. <laughs> You can see the so many apps, they come and they tell about uh, this. Uh, doctor, any opinion you want to tell me and all? Mo surprisingly, what, have the time, what happens is, um, few of the uh, apps we would have never heard as a doctor. Uh, never heard on what is happening and on all those things. We say, okay, okay, this is a new app, I'll go through it, we'll definitely see. Oh, doctor, you don't know. Uh, I said, <laughs> there are tw uh, hundreds of apps, how can I know this? Uh, it is very difficult. We always tell which uh, suits you for the management of diabetes. So, so, as a doctor, my opinion is always thing anything new it comes. It may be in the paper or in the media or a thing. First go through it. First go through it and see the real applicability. Not all apps may be very suitable to our patient, very important. Not all apps, whichever the things you are seeing is there, they looks very attractive and all those things. But always, whether it suits to our patient, we have to look into that. Like uh, diet apps are there, uh, uh, all the virtual health uh, apps are there. You can see that uh, another Omeda Health, uh, all those things are there. But when it comes to application, whether, it, whether your patient understands that, because saying all these things may be very, very easy, uh, but really whether it is applicable and whether we can able to teach to our patient is an important thing. A mobile is there. Yes, smartphones are there, definitely. How many of our patients, including Y patient, any doctors, we, we see only few things in our mobile. There are so many. We take Apple 13 and all those things, whether we really use that. Because we feel we are uneducated in certain aspects. But only thing is when it comes to technology in management of diabetes, as a diabetes specialist, we need to know that. At this juncture, I would invite Dr. S. V. Kolkani. This gentleman has spent years into, into digital empowerment for colleagues, doctors, and patients alike. I would want his opinion, please. There's a mic in the front, sir. If you could just elaborate a little on what has been spoken so far. Uh, thank you. Uh, one fact is technology is around us, and we medical professionals are not at all using technology. If you have got a smartphone, you are not using one ten thousand part of the capacity of the smartphone. And technology in diabetes doesn't mean only apps and insulin pumps. You have got smart glucometers. You have got talking glucometers. A glucometer which will show a color in the signal fashion, traffic signal fashion, red, green, and yellow, whether the sugar is in control or not. There are glucometers which can take acetone for detection of ketosis because you remember that whole all uh, Rothra's taste or the strip taste which are to be done and right like what exactly Rajiv uh, Mangesh and Arvinda said that you should not develop a disease called as a MAD that is medical application disorder <laughs> you should <laughs> we are a near Sir Vivek Buddhi to understand which app is good for which person and you don't need a 10,000 rupees smartphone, a 500 or 600 rupee dumb phone for my patient who stays in a village, who doesn't have an internet connection. But if that person keeps his food diary even into a SMS format, that is also very important. And one more very practical thing which we can, all of you can do is, if you have got advanced Samsung phones, you have got a health data into that means if your phone is locked and if you are found unconscious or somewhere, seven people can be contacted. There is a application called as ICE in case of emergency. You can put down all your medical data, all your drug allergies that you are diabetic, you are hypertensive, you are hypothyroid, you are hyponatremic, so that the doctor when he opens the signal phone, he comes to know about the data. Actually, there are many things, and thanks to Mangesh, we are going to have uh, a separate technology session in API, and soon, at the end of 1922, you will find a uh, wonderful monogram on uh, uh, digital technology. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So I think uh, at the end of this little first part of the, of, the, of the entire discussion is that we need to, I think, surely, you know, empower ourselves. Don't, let's not shy away from technology ourselves. We need to empower first ourselves and then uh, I think we can empower our patients. Yes, a quick comment, please.
end problem is almost 60% to 70% of my patients are coming alone who are uneducated still. I mean, the elderly, the rural patients, and the accompanying relative is not there who is techno savvy or techno conscious or oriented. So there is a, I mean, my experience, this is my personal experience, so I'm not saying everybody, and metro people would be rather more advanced in that way. But otherwise, the practicality is that quite often the patients above 45, 50, they are not so techno savvy. Many of them still have these small Nokia phones. And as SV said, that messaging is also a simple good idea. So we probably need, in addition to like uh, diabetes educators, some techno associate person in our own clinic uh, so as to teach us or improve us as well as be a communicator or better person to the those patients who are not coming with the relatives. Quite often I have to write the uh, message to the son or the daughter on the prescription. I call him, but he's busy in the office. So such things are very common in my practice. Sure, I think challenges, S but very, yes. Very nice. I'll, uh, just, just a minute. So, you know, um, so I'll, I'll again uh, take a leaf out of real world that uh, a spouse of a patient told me that, uh, doctor, my wife is not coming to you for five years. Uh, I want her to come to you again. So I said, get her. But the problem is that she wants a continuous, you know, discussion with you. So I said, that's going to be difficult. So she says, he, she keeps on sending you WhatsApp, but you never answer. I said, Achha, okay. But you know, now her new doctor, I don't want to name the doctor, so he has got his own app. So his Mona answers at 2 a.m. in the night. So she messages that, can I eat a banana? Yes, go ahead and eat a banana. So she says, so we have a lot of naive people. What I'm saying, there are a lot of naive people. So the patient believes that the doctor at 2 a.m. is answering that, can I eat a banana? And this fellow I go to for five years doesn't answer, doesn't look at my WhatsApp. So we have both the extremes here, you know? I'm missing my Mona. <laughs> <laughs> So Mind first thing is, I always remember Dr. Prasanna Kumar sir has come here. He has come uh, 15, like maybe 10 years back or 12 years back. Uh, in Bangalore in a conference, uh, he was giving a talk. The, uh, that is where the technology started, in the sense. He was giving a talk, and by giving a talk, he did a two consultation. <laughs> in the presentation itself, see, now I'll do the consultation here. <laughs> from uh, abroad, uh, he had two abroad patients. He did a virtual consultation there only. <laughs> so I was so, so surprised, this can be done, isn't it? That is what the thinking came. Now if you see now, in this uh, corona period, every one of us done as the yeah. same uh, digital Absolutely. technology. Isn't it, sir? I, I am, <laughs> sir has taught me that time, <laughs> the first time how to do a consultation in presentation also. Wow. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's great. So from that aspect, the first part which we've covered and we've, I think, established, unless anybody has a doubt that uh, the e-clinical treatment, e-clinical diagnostics is here to stay. We can't shy away. We need to empower ourselves first and then so uh, empower our patients. An equally important part, going a step uh, into actually the non-clinical area, but important for us from a legal perspective, from a research perspective, from a study perspective, is EMR, electronic medical records. I believe this is the future. Most of us, when you, most of the students, when you actually enter practice, everything will be on an electronic record. Uh, it's still happening. I was, in fact, very happy. My alma mater, JJ Hospital, of, uh, a 1,500 bed hospital of government went EMR some five years back. So if a government setup also is taking up EMR in the private sector, I think we as clinicians need to know a little about it. So handwritten prescriptions were obviously the, the past and even the present uh, to an extent, but in the future may not be. And as the age old joke goes, what a doctor writes, only a chemist can interpret. So those days are going to change. And I think very soon we'll have the, uh, the the electronic records because of drawbacks of paper records being the dosages and medication errors can happen. There's the generic names are missing, language barriers, find the record, lost being elsewhere, blah, blah, blah. So we know these things. Uh, for the court's prescription for doctors as well, we know that there are many cases along the way where a handwritten prescription hasn't stood legal ground. There are electronic data, electronic prescription, which actually are much more sort of uh, allowed. The MCI211 Gazette 
of the Indian government on October 8, 2016 also has said that a comprehensive prescription should have the doctor's full name, the qualification, the patient details, name of the generic or equivalent do along with the dosages, strength and instructions, name and address of the medical store with the pharmacy's name and the person dispensing as well as doctor's signature. So on this, I would want our expert panel to throw a little light that EMR today and EMR tomorrow. Dr. Devask, please. Yeah, EMR has become now probably a part, slowly has started become a part of our medical practice now. And of course it is going to be. And it's not just, uh, you know, writing down the prescription and all that, but all for, you know, now creating the national awareness. Now, why probably India as a whole, as a country, is not well, or, or our work is not well appreciated globally, is primarily because of our lack of, you know, the preserved data and the data analysis. Everybody of us, we work to, Everybody has number of patients. We, we treat our patients in a much better way than probably the, the Caucasian or the other world treats. But unfortunately, we do not have our records done properly. So this is one area which is likely to be very, very strong in coming times the moment EMR comes into the picture. So it's not just prescriptions which is going to be a part of the matter. It's going to be the data, the analysis, various interpretation, even the government decision makings, the deployment of the national policies, preventions, Everything can be done just simply on EMR. Apart from, you know, sending the digital prescriptions, practicing telemedication, that is completely a different aspect of the electronic medical record system. But as a whole, if we have a single platform where whole nation collects each and every aspect of our patients, maybe anonymously where, you know, all the parts of legal, uh, legality, data privacy, you know, completely preserved, I am sure that in coming years, we are going to see much better India as a healthcare sector in comparison to the rest of the world as well. Great. Thank you, Rajiv. I want your take on EMR for research and studies. You do a lot of publications, you have papers coming out. So I, your take as a modern man of medicine on EMR and the research. Before Anjana leaves the room, I'm going to <laughs> tell her to give a comment on this because they have the probably the largest database of EMRs. <laughs> multiple clinics around ICMR data. <laughs> well caught. We don't really manage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we don't really manage it, uh, manage it, it manages itself. So it does that. We've of course had to update it from time to time. When we initially started, whenever we started 30 years ago, it was a very basic system. But uh, once you started expanding, the platforms keep needing updation and change and things like that. But once you've done that, the EMR is most helpful. Truthfully, I don't think we would have made it through COVID without the EMR support that we had. And I'm sure everybody has had the same experience. Uh, not only it helps you look at things in the current time, but it allows you to do all of those overtime analyses and things, not for patient care, but also for research and things like that. So. I don't think it's even possible nowadays to survive without a proper EMR system because things are just going to be all over the place if you don't have it together. Great. Thank you, Anjana. So I, I, I think uh, EMR, EHR, I think uh, apart from a paperless prescription, uh, there are a lo lot of things which today have been, uh, you, 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 you could analyze your own work, most importantly, give you insights whether you're doing well or bad, you know, whether the geriatric group is coming to you or you're getting younger people. What is the geographic area people are coming to you? There's a lot of data. You the gender as well. The gender as well, you know. Um, I'm sure yours is cute there, <laughs> you know. But a lot of, lot of these kind of data, apart from that finances, uh, apart from that uh, your SMS alerts to patients, uh, your pharmacy can be linked. So your uh, accounts can be linked, your Form 16 can be linked. So a lot of things can be linked. And today in, in today's world, you know, where we are all paying GST, we are all tax paying people. So EMR is not just for the patient. It is more for us. The, the, the data which we can take out is, is a gold mine. But for us, it simplifies a lot of stuff that our accounts team or a CA or all of us have to do. And that's where, it, it will add a lot of automation into it and that is where the EMR comes in. 
So if we optimize the use of the EMR other than just the prescription, that's where the benefits to all of us come in. You know? So understood and accepted. Now, Arvinda, I am a person who I accept all of this. I am just, I'm not tech savvy. I can't enter the data. I want to do it, but I find it difficult. So what, what as a person for me and maybe in the future, and most of us here want to use the EMR, but how do we use maybe as Rajiv said, the automation aspect of it, or how, do, how does it make it easy for us? We want to use it, how to make it easy for us? So first thing is uh, education of ourselves. In a, in a main thing is we should try to learn some simple things. In a sense, I always feel uh, when uh, EMR is there, we should think of other side as well. In a sense, always it is better to go and do an EMR of your own, which can be done. It's very easy. It will uh, only take some time and you call, catch out of a tech guy and he'll support you. And you create your own EMR. Uh, it's, it sounds very difficult. So when you say an own EMR, uh, own software? Own software. Yeah, own software. Once you create that, your data is with you only and you know what you are doing, it can be published, it can be, uh, you can see the flow, how the things are going on in your patients and all. At the same time, and your data is not leaked somewhere, because nowadays, if you stay, they, they take the EMR, if you take the other side of EMR, there are so many things like your data, your, what are the prescription you are giving, what is your style of prescription, which brand you are writing, all these things are leaked to somebody. And the other things is if the patient's data is there, if the patient number are there, the messages are sent as an advertisement and all those things. So instead, to avoid all these things, if you have your own software, that will become a big, uh, big thing. For example, if you have a software, one patient from Bangalore is moving to Mumbai. I can always ask uh, Rajiv, say, this is the patient EHR. Uh, you just uh, have a look into that and this you follow it up. So it becomes so easy for them. In the sense, there is no discussion at all. Once you open the EHR and you see the health record of the patient, it is right. there. You no need to ask to the patient at all. You well, can have a discussion. That so, would be very easy. So that's customized EMR. You know, there are many uh, players in the market like Practo and everybody, so many others for that matter. But you, what he's trying to say is, I think, customizing the EMR to your own needs. Dr. Tevaskar, the, the point, practice, please. Uh, all these apps and all, uh, like, very, very cautiously it is, yes. should be used. Yes. Unless you should not uh, leak your patient's data and all those things happen. The other side of EMR. Yes. If you have a customized software, that will be very, very useful. Okay. I think I, I like to, you know, agree with uh, Dr. Arvinda, but I have a little bit of different uh, say to what you said, Amit, is this that I find it difficult to use it. Believe me, it's not difficult at all. A common I mean, person... Uh, people like me, I mean... No, not at all. Even, even a, even a absolute illiterate, I am not talking about techno illiterate guy, but an absolute illiterate guy, simple, everybody of us has been using mobile phone. Did you get any training to use your mobile phones? Never. You just picked up the device and you use it. It, it teaches you yourself. Yeah. What is most important message that we would like to give it to you, it's this that what technology you use is immaterial. Yes. Presence of technology and its use is important. So its presence is very important. It's not necessary what technology, which software you use, who makes a software for you. It's not important. What is most important is the presence. It is there and you're using it. It, it is more important than it. And and most of the softwares that we have, that you ha have for your medical records, you know, if, if you are, uh, you know, uh, uh, just a graduate uh, secretary can enter the data for you, why you cannot do it? It is simple as that. So it, it's, it's very simple. It educates you yourself. So many of the softwares which are available are so easy to use okay. that you so, do not require even a formal training. So pr primarily what I think on both the contracts we have tried to say so far, whether it's electronic digital means or tools or it's EMR. The, and more the importantly, innovation... I have a feeling, sorry to have interrupted you, what Arvinda was probably pointing out the dark side of the story. But believe me, Arvinda, it's not the only way the people can track you. People can track you with multiple ways. Do you feel that the, the, you are not getting tracked now even though you are using a technology or not? So rather than it being an inhibitory thing, you know, start using it. You know, everything is going to have a ifs and buts of the story, for sure. But then by just by the scare that my patient data is going to be leaked out to somebody, or I might be tracked, or my prescription would be tracked, should not stop you from using the technology. 
that is what i want to say i think that's right and in fact on the next one if you see even the medical council of india and the policies of emr in india have depicted that that, that yeah, is it's the on the icmr forward. you yes. know ministry of family and welfare it that is there officially even and it has been legalized now yes so niti ayog the uh, nmc the many newer ones are saying and the benefits are quite a few i think it it and it ensures the patient records are easily accessible can be stored easily electronic format reduces the number of records lost improves quality of patient records and it's definitely cost effective uh, helps in tracking patients clinical progress improve patient compliance so many 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 advantages of emr any thoughts from the audience anybody wants to jump in here make a comment type of security gap oh emr is a wonderful for india because we are <laughs> <laughs> but what if somebody maybe they just speak yes there are so many speakers here they may flop yes that's always a risk i agree in fact we did touch upon that point I agree. So I think, uh, with as Dr. Tevaskar also pointed out, there are pros and cons. We need to be a little uh, cautious when we use it. Uh, advantages of EMR, especially in diabetes, what we are here to discuss as a conference as an as a venue, are quite a few. Again, list the patient with diabetes, reminders, connect with patient, patient report cards, trends of diabetes related tests, and engage prescriptions are quite a few. So I think the future uh, of the government initiatives are on EMR. Uh, comment, please, an expert comment rather. So, so, so we have used electronic health records in our hospital for seven, eight years, and it's not an option anymore. So that's it. So let me just show you, it's painful at the beginning because you can see a patient and write your note, I have a pre-specified cheat and you just can mark, mark, mark. And you have to type and you have to record and you have to put, you know, medication reconciliation, and it's taking a long time. So when you were able to see a patient in five, 10 minutes, now it's gonna be 10, 15 minutes or more. But the beauty is that everything is in the, in the computer, it's there. And more importantly now, especially for diabetes care, is that at least in Atlanta, we have several hospital systems. They are all linked. So I know if somebody came to the emergency room at Atlanta Medical Center or Grady or Emory, I can look at the lab work and I can look at even the note of everybody. And the other thing is that if you go, for example, in chart review, you can see what the note has been for every single doctor. And everything is in computer, so you don't have to read poor writing of doctors or poor notification. So it's not an option. An electronic health record is going to come for everybody, like it or not. And, and to me now, it would be very hard to practice medicine without a chart. Yes. If you asked me that question seven years ago, my goodness, every, everybody wanted to retire and quit. I think that's a beautiful point that it's not an option anymore. We need to implement EMR, certain pearls we can take home, that it, it's, it's, it's a part of the clinical practice. We need to have suitable software, as Dr. Arvinda rightly said, customize them. Training of doctors and staff by workshops are required. Those who are using it, try to update them as much as possible. Enter the data the way you want to retrieve it. Uh, you do your own clinical analysis, meaningful use of EMR as well. And uh, yeah, quick comment. Uh, about the cons, the only security is the main cons for the EMR, but in uh, as I use uh, HealthFlix from more than three years, okay, but uh, yet not I get any feedback like for a privacy, first thing, and when I'll enter patient data, I have options, first, name, age, and mobile number. That's what I need. I'll fill that only. Other personal details, it's uh, optional, you want to add it or you don't add it, okay? So like uh, number, globally we are only using, uh, uh, giving our number here only, okay? But uh, compared to the cons, only uh, pros are very, matlab, EMR is the, I think the uh, future of India for every upcoming doctors or who is undergraduate, postgraduate, I think they start working and they are start uh, accepting more technologies in the medical field and then, and then only we'll get the good kind of output in every uh, aspect, especially for the chronic diseases like diabetes, thyroid, uh, hypertension, PCOS patients, 
you even being a doctor and being the patient whenever you wherever in the earth you will have your own data you have patient data accepted so i okay. think the point you are making is the same and we ag really agree yeah. that it's it's the way the future pros yeah. and cons will be there but need to uh, customize and enter data so yeah. i think to summarize at the at the end and i will be asking a take home message from each one of you so better prepare on a single line take home message before i, I finish it so i think the couple of last slides how to improve clinical practice by digital technologies Never, they are creating a never-before-seen opportunity to improve clinical practice, engagement both on the clinic and beyond, uh, enable us to improve design, reduce the setup times, electronic health records, will improve delivery and enable us to accurately forecast digital uh, drug supplies, avoid wastage and delays as well, and trials will be more patient-centric in the future. And diabetic technologies as well with, so with, with over the period of time have improved. I think uh, what's next is uh, Dr. Uh, digital contact lenses, digital tattoos and non-invasive glucometers. So I think that and the six building blocks for sustainable digital solutions include a strategic leadership governance, policies and regulations, uh, a, a communication infrastructure too, and healthcare platforms. So I believe uh, with that in mind, first we've got, uh, starting with Dr. Tevaskar, a single line take home message on digital health for all of us. Yep, I, I'll pick up the same line of Dr. Umpras here. It's like the technology is not going to be an option to you. We will need to have it for everything. And we are already having it. We need to continue to use it. And this is going to be the part of our life. Great. So not this, an option anymore. Give, yes, not an option anymore. This is a wonderful area which is going to really give us a chance to what we call it as a precision individualized medicine practice. Rajiv, Absolutely. other than Mona, your decom message. <laughs> so I, I, I think that as we upgrade our softwares in the phone, uh, we don't have a upgrade button on our human body. I think uh, that is something and we all need to update and upgrade. And technology is there for us to upgrade. Wonderful. So upgrade and update, very well put. Arvinda, last words. So India is in the mode of uh, digitalization. We are seeing a new digital India now. So in the same way, as a doctor, as a diabetes doctor, we need to be tech savvy and you, we, we should up upgrade ourselves in the latest technology, become a digital diabetologist. Thank you so much.